go for it. Hello there everyone, uh, welcome to another bi-monthly slash quad-monthly review. We're going to have to change the name, I think. We but, probably uh, are, yeah. Uh, maybe you ought to go ahead and mention that before we get too far into this. Mm, I was going to name names and kick butts first, but... Okay. Um, because of the actual waitlist for these reviews, we are actually talking about trying to speed things up. So instead of every two weeks, we are aiming now for every week, and we'll see how we go with that. But uh, in the meantime, I am Iron Mark III, of course, and I am joined by the other voice behind the screen, Damadoc. Yo, what's up? Yep, my partner in crime over there. Um, we also have in our midst a guest commentator in the form of Lily Kari. Hello. Yep, um, who joins us in many of our multiplayer escapades. And we have two observers, who I don't know if they're planning to be um, joining us or not as well. We have Rocketsman and uh, Cannon and Carl in the call with us as well. Yeah, I wasn't entirely sure how to pronounce his name either. Can <laughs> uh, on N Carl. Yeah. But as I said, I don't know if they are planning to participate or not, but yeah. here we are. Since this thing is usually smaller than the, the uh, largest stuff that we've gone with, hopefully this won't take us too long to look through. Well, I do really like the look of it, though. It looks awesome. Yes, the yeah. black and blue very good aesthetic well. works on it. Now, it looks mm. like uh, there's lots and lots of uh, mimic and or decoration work. This I'm little spiral thing he's got going on in the back here, that looks pretty damn sweet, actually. I'm wondering what he's used for that. Uh, oh, hey, I got a... Projector on a spin block. Yeah, I was about to say. Ah. Uh, I thought it was like getting the game meshed and flattened or something. Okay. Looks pretty cool, but uh, yeah, we should probably give a rundown on this craft before we get too much further in being awed and amazed by it. Mm-hmm. Right. So, yeah, go ahead if you, uh, if you want there. Sorry, we, we didn't decide who was doing this ahead of time. Yeah. So, um, this review was requested by SMNK. It is called the Parallax. It's actually one of the in-game enemies. Yes, I so think I we think... should uh, note here that Parallax seems to be one of the keepers of the lore for the game and has been a Discord member for several weeks, actually, now. We just keep recruiting people, don't we? Not on purpose, they tend to find us for some crazy ass reason that I'm not entirely sure, but yeah. Not to yeah, say that our, we're complaining. Our efforts to correct to correct and corrupt the user base is continuing to bear fruit. I know, I right? Mean, um, yeah, they're always welcome, yes. There's nothing sinister going on at all. <laughs> Sorry, I have to get the pen left. Sure. I'm just kind of looking through things here. Is there anything that's particularly standing out to you right now? you like to start with? The, um, I'm still in the outer view because we've not finished our rundown yet. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so the description it has a pair of 32 meter huge anti ship missiles, which um, we accidentally had Dama spawn it in as a hostile. It launched some missiles before we despawned it, and then we had to wait quite a while as the missiles flew away. So. Pretty long lived, as it turns out. Mm -hmm. uh, it has thump missiles to soak anti missile fire and remove spaced armor, high penetration heat and fragmentation, follow up missiles for interior damage, uh, 10 top attacking medium missiles for consistent damage output, and to prevent enemy anti missile systems from resetting during the long reload of the main missile armament. Um, but SMNK describes this as a heavy bomber, actually. Which, I guess, fits. It just has a lot of secondary weaponry on it. And it prefers going up against large vessels, especially those that rely on active defenses and heavy armor instead of evasion. Okay, also, we've been joined by Matey. Hello. Hi, Matey. Hi, Matey. Oh, may I ask what's happening over here? We are recording 
um, a new craft review. Hmm. Yeah, we're doing an entry by SNK. Uh, it, he, uh, it's one of the craft that's actually in the campaign, and it is uh, from the Scarlet Dawn. Parallax. Mm -hmm. Some things to note about SNMK. It seems to be on quite the kick with the uh, front siders here lately. Yeah, I dislike front siders, honestly. I think they're a little bit cheesy when paired with evasion algorithms. Maybe just a wee bit. Oh, wait, look at those missiles. They yeah, are big. yeah. Um, something I want to note about these when I was just looking at them earlier while Ion was uh, babbling. <laughs> Your words, not mine. Anyway, um, yeah, these look like they could be potentially very nasty because they have the thumper heads and uh, remote guidance, so it could be quite challenging to try to stop these things. You do not stop those. Uh, yeah, actually, there's not. there's two different types here. Uh, one side has is just like completely looks like it's set up for damage absorption, and the other side is the actual damage dealer here with a shape charge head and the remote guidance, uh, like about five frag war heads and two explosive warheads. So this thing will probably uh, give you a very very bad day. Well, if yeah, you that's the fall up missile. If you look at the Thumperhead one, that one's actually worse. And I just found, found it out today. Yeah, I saw you were tinkering uh, with that earlier. Well, I kind I have to say those things are brutal, mm -hmm. unfair, overpowered, and game-breaking. So let's have a look at the uh, stats on this guy here real quick. 121 meters per second, that is actually pretty decent. Uh, seems like though that you don't get as much protection going over 100 meters per second in the current version of the game as you did, like, say, back in Tupa 4.9. So, speed is say. still good, but uh, it's not necessarily as good as it used to be, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's... Um... It, it gave so much protection before because craft just couldn't track weapon systems couldn't track or calculate reliably for hitting things mm -hmm. at those speeds. Uh, high speeds mm -hmm. yeah but uh, basically they've improved the game in that sense which is why they're more reliable which was which needed on nerfed several craft it was needed though speed yeah. was too powerful I'm looking at these jet engines here and I don't think these are quite built for efficiency let me see if I can find the control one really quick. Well, look at how many fuel injectors there are, Ion. Well, there's a ton of combustors as well. Uh, uh, yeah, these things are not built for efficiency at all. Overall engine efficiency is only 106%. Um, well, it's still a decent efficiency. It has an well, intake. Considering, considering it's easy to get a jet engine up to the 170, 180%, and you... It, if you're specializing it, it goes above 200%, it's, uh, you know... Yeah, but it's not but, the worst it could be, that's what I oh, meant. Oh no, it could be a lot yeah. worse, and it gives a lot of power, which is why this craft is so fast. Yeah, he wasn't exactly a slouch when uh, he went in to put in all these uh, material containers here. He's got uh, two of the large ones here in the back, and a little further up, he's got like a little cluster, or actually several little clusters of material containers. Surrounded, uh, that surround the uh, medium turbines here. They're yeah, practically necessary, honestly. Yeah. I, just look at the reload cost of those missiles and you'll see why. Oh, I'm pretty sure. Uh, pretty much like the entire front of this is almost just ammo boxes, ammo boxes, ammo boxes. Zero cost isn't too bad on them, it's something like um, just under 2,200 per missile. Mm hmm. Yeah, but that's perfectly the biggest weakness for the parallax is basically just time. Yeah, that is a problem with the, the Scarlet Dawn craft. Is they probably burn through materials faster than anyone because they have so many advanced late game units, which I think honestly seems to be kind of a, a problem for them because. 
who who remembers back when they first came out with the strategic AI and the great talents were just constantly thrashing them? Yeah. You want to remember that? Against, yeah. If I remember correctly, great it? talents units were basically high, uh, highly efficient in co terms of cost. Mm -hmm. So they made up a bunch of their uh, units by num uh, military strength by number instead of actual in individual unit strength. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I think it's a combination of factor factors back then because Steel Spiders and Twin Guard also started war with the Scarlet Dawn, mm -hmm. which led to some interesting results. So I'm having a look at uh, one of the boilers here. I was just looking at that. Uh, which one? There's like... There's I was like the forward, but it uh, looks like the forward and midships ones are set up the same. Okay. Well, that'll make yeah, it easier think, to I look them over. I think they're identical. Okay. What oh, kind wait, of efficiency no, are we getting out of these, I wonder? Actually, the uh, midship set is more efficient than the uh, forward set. Okay. But that's just because they've got a bigger turbine built into them. I'm assuming that they went with that over like a, just a standard fuel engine. Because I don't, I don't really see any other power generation other than possibly the jet engines. And those don't seem like they have any uh, generators on them. So, yeah, so this entire craft they, is basically electric powered. They do. Um, they do? Yeah, the jet... Oh, okay, um, okay, I didn't see that. Yeah, it's near the front. Okay, yeah, I see um, I suspect that they are at a lower priority than the steam engines, which is why we're not seeing any flickering from those. But it should be noted that they are set to generate energy. Yeah, so it's like um, the jets will act as a backup power source if the steam engines aren't keeping up. That's what I'm reading from that. Okay. And I'm, I say it's more lines of this entire craft is battery powered by the electric engine. Yep, it's all electric. Turbine electric. It's fair to say the generators in the custom jets are turbines as well, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, so it's, Just it's a different electric. kind. I have yeah. been testing against it, and honestly, that craft, it's got a lot of heavy armor, which means you cannot rely on the fact that you'll knock it out of the sky, and those batteries are well protected. Yeah, it's um... Good. EMP probably won't do a whole lot good against either, because he's got lots and lots of surge protectors. But that's mm -hmm. mostly just around the jet engines themselves. But I imagine the um, what is it? The heavy armor is probably going to soak up a hell of a lot of that EMP too if it happens to hit. And even then, it's got metal out of sheathing to ward off uh, less powerful hits. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. It's not going to break the bank to fix this thing either if it's against a light opponent. Uh, by chance, have you looked at any of these missile defenses, Ian? Um, I've looked. I glanced at a few. I've mostly been looking at the powertrain, the uh, fact it's got uh, big heartstone built in, that kind of thing. Are you talking about the uh, interceptors mounted on the wings? Uh, I spotted those, and I have also spotted in several places. He has uh, the um, well, you know the that latest cheese fad that's been going on, where people have like harpoons connected to the decoys so that everything is just dragged behind. That's kind of what's going on yeah. here. There's like about seven of them. I've counted in yeah. total. It's not entirely cheesy, but it's definitely very worthwhile. And something I'll note is that rapid maneuvers do seem to actually ca counter having them because the wire will snap. Yeah, the wire has a maximum force depending on the launcher. Yeah. Beyond which it snaps. Or it might just be a disengagement range thing kicking in as well. As mm. those are two reasons that it might work. It's I'm the force, noticing, um, definitely the backup. force. Yeah, it has backup ion drives at the back here as well. Mm -hmm. Though its uh, vertical thrust is purely jets. It looks like 
so if it does ditch in the water it won't be able to lift off again by itself. That's kind of standard though with a lot of Scarlet Dawn designs. Once they go into the water there's no getting back out for them. Which I don't yeah. know if that's purposely built in there. I'm assuming it is considering their difficulty. Might be. I mean um, Might be. they're trying to be meta aren't they? Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, there's some more yeah, more active decoys on the sides, as well as the back. There's the vertical, vertical uh, launch tubes. It looks like he was trying really, really hard to keep these uh, custom jet engines as armored as it could. Oh, massive bank of missile interceptors pointing straight down. Oh, is that what those were? I, I mm. saw like a uh, something yeah, like that. Uh, yeah, they're they're missile interceptors. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Really big, really big bank of yeah. Them. Yeah, it's the typical setup for small interceptors, and I have to say it works really well. Uh, however, I must give this craft a zero out of ten. Absolutely terrible craft. Would not use. <laughs> Return to factory because it doesn't have small offensive missiles. How dare you? A little partial of those are giant. Yeah, for anyone that doesn't know, um, I have a strong tendency to use small missiles in an offensive capacity. Did, did anyone happen to spot this mannequin here in the uh, quote-unquote uh, cockpit area? Uh, yeah, no. I certainly did. I didn't. Uh... Oh yeah. Oh, of course. Dabbing. Right. <laughs> Honestly, this thing seems to just be slapped down a submarine at least 10 meters below the water and... That's it. Yes. You've won. Um, that's so far what I'm getting, but I, I haven't really had a good look at its detection systems. I haven't seen any like uh, wireless snoopers as of yet. It might Although... be able to pick up submarines with wireless snoopers and or the sonar buoys. Not really equipped to actually attack submarines, though. Yeah. That's, I think what he's going to. Yeah. However, um, it could get lucky. But uh, that's about it. It depends on what angle the missiles. Well, I was going to say traditionally the weapons that most people mount on submarines tend to be torpedoes or missiles, and this thing would, from what I've been able to tell so far, would be a very good counter to both. Yeah. It's a lot of anti-missile interceptor mm -hmm. power. Um, Vehicle? Yes, it does have an intra vehicle. So if it's paired with something else that can detect underwater, it might be able to do something. But uh, yeah, it's not really built to deal with subs at all. It doesn't look like. Yeah. Another thing is also want to point out is actually never mind. If you went with like a submarine PAC or railgun, it might do something against this. But um, that's. Pretty far view between. Uh, yeah. What kind of railgun? Do what? What kind of railgun? I would imagine you could use like a uh, super cavitation railgun. No, probably a kinetic. Yeah, in a, probably do in a submarine, probably might tag this thing once or twice. I, I just checked. There is no wild snoopers on this. Yeah, I wasn't able to find any either. Yeah, I, I looked in the list from the um, sensors manager, and there wasn't anything. So it doesn't have one. Uh, it seems like though, uh, well, why are, there's like one, two, three, four, five PIDs here, AI PIDs. Looks like the one in the back doesn't really do anything though. Yeah. One does hover, one does pitch, one does roll, and one does yaw. He's got a rather interesting configuration for the AI is set up in here. Um, Top armor looks like it could be potentially an issue here because I'm only seeing metal beams here and it's at a rather vulnerable spot because that would be a quick way to get some EMP damage on your AI or these uh, beams of batteries on the top. But of course, good luck trying so, to get into a position to hit that. Yeah, so it sounds like you want a high altitude, maybe space bomber to take this out. I have to be enough. You don't have to go fly that spacecraft because this thing flies at 335 meters uh -huh. in combat. 
it wouldn't if, necessarily have to be a bomber. I mean, you could just probably have like some kind of downward pack just fly over the top of this with a bunch of EMP damage and quite possibly fry this thing in one shot. Likely, but yeah. the, the speed makes it uh, hard to do. Best oh, of course. Way, probably need to chase it with a, a flock of interceptors of some kind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're not trying to look for ways how to counter this thing. We're just it's part of the review. Reviewing it. <laughs> yeah. Though this is something that any of us could potentially come up against, so that's probably why we have that mindset right now, I imagine. Hmm. I mean, I'm. Uh, I am probably going to bring my experience into question here by admitting I've never faced this thing. Mm hmm. Uh, we are getting some back static back. on. Maybe you might want to fix that. Anyway. Uh, I did also notice that there are some missiles here that launch out of the top. Uh, shape charge EMP, uh, again with a remote guidance. So yeah, that, that's part of the um, damage dealing battery mm -hmm. that was mentioned in the description. It it seems pretty clear to me that this is mostly designed for slow moving targets. I don't think this would do too well against flyers. Uh, something like a custom jet engine fighter, something like that. But as much anti-missile countermeasures he's got going on, you probably might want something that's hit scan with in like a heavy fighter or something like that. To try to counter this, but again just kind of theorizing there. No, well, I, th I think the main issue that's cropping up is that it's specialized mm -hmm. more than anything else, isn't it? It is quite yeah. specialized. Yeah it is definitely very specialized in almost all regards. 600,000 material heavy bomber designed mm -hmm. to nuke. I think mainly enemy big ships is probably its favorite target. That's what I'm theorizing as well. It would be interesting to see this thing going up against like a, um, a Kingstead. Well, um, I think we've actually touched on everything integrated into it. Uh, I will say I love the styling again, and I, I yes, like the, the styling is amazing. Me. Yeah, I don't know what color. Pretty nice. Yeah. What, what color is it for you, Dana? Uh, black, red, and blue. Is that? I thought your I thought your fleet scheme had green in it. It does. Mm. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's um, got a little bit of green here on the back, but yeah, it's a combat testing time though, I think. Okay. So let's cut her loose. I'll actually mention something really quickly because I spawned her in against something with a railgun and well to be honest it doesn't have many defensive capabilities against fast weapons. Yeah, I didn't see anything as far as shielding or what else? It's just armor and speed. Yeah, just armor and speed. I didn't see the any doesn't... lambs or anything like that either now that you mention it, matey. Yeah, there is no lambs or anything. The one thing that this thing does well is... Well, against slow APS I can imagine it being relatively powerful, but... Mm -hmm. Well, there is always a big but with these things, and... It Demo doesn't likes butts. do... I couldn't help it, I'm sorry. Uh, well, it's obvious. I put that in there for a reason, hmm. and the one thing I'll mention is that she does not have good defenses against fast shells. I spawned her in against the Megalodon for a little bit, and well, Megalodon probably gave it a good thrashing, I guess. Well, every single shell from the Megalodon's main battery actually hit. Hmm. That might be worth trying here, Ian. Oh, Ooh, yeah. Um, that was pretty devastating. You you got that right? Yeah. Um, I even got damage numbers, which is new for multiplayer as well. Mm hmm So like, almost the entire side of this Kingstead disappeared. Pretty much. I don't know if that was the explosive or the thumb damage, but quite possibly a bit of both. 
It looked like the uh, heat was working pretty effectively on it as well. It looks like this guy likes to stay at a massive distance. Oh, the king says actually dead. Really? Um, yeah, AI. Yeah, map. It Not did surprised. the control power. If you take a look. That's probably why it hasn't come in for a second pass. Yeah, it's just hanging around. Uh, would you kill the kingsteads? Um, I don't think we can. Can we? Oh yeah, we can yeah. now. Awesome. Yeah, you've been needing that. Destroy enemy vehicles. I don't because I'm a client. Okay. So, uh, do we want to try spawning in something a little bit bigger to fight this? You said megalodon, right? Yes. Can I despawn the layer, please? Uh. I guess we could. I mean, it wouldn't really matter. It well, actually, it won't let me despawn. That's not an option here. Might as well kill it. Okay. Um, because the king said when it loaded in, attack the layer. So. Or you could just move it underwater. Yeah, it's a fortress. It wouldn't like. Right. That. Even the tear seems to be hitting quite a bit, which is interesting. And. Heavy missile decoys. Yeah, this thing doesn't do well against heavy missile decoys. Its only job is to punish players who don't have those, and... Well, occasionally those who have them, but not enough. Mm -hmm. As I've just seen it take out the entire tier of stern in a single shell, but it's still losing. Which faction was Megalodon again? Uh, still Strider's Godly. And he was a goddy, I just wasn't sure which faction it was. Here we go. It's a shark. Guess which faction? Deep Water God. Obviously. And it should also be noted that the Megalodon, it, uh... It's got some packs here, so it's probably gonna be... <laughs> should I shut off its weaponry? Nah. I'm just kind of curious to see how it's going to do against the Megalodon here. Sounds like it's my first time looking at a Megalodon as well. Uh, it looks like it was able to take out several of those missiles. Uh, the uh, packs just did a buttload of damage. They've got quite a bit of bot confetti coming off of this thing. And one of the salvos just fully hit, if mm -hmm. you take a look. They're reliably hitting the back section. Yeah. So the counter like seems to be just a huge missile decoy and then a good railgun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if it's if this thing comes across like a newer player, um, I think this would potentially make him rage quit after a bit. Yeah, the uh, Megalodon is seems to be perfectly countering it. <laughs> Anything with fast weapons, because even the tier after several good hits... No, it's, it's, also, it's also counting because it's got enough um, anti-missile deterrent to stop all the weaponry coming from the Parallax. Mm -hmm. So, Parallax literally couldn't win that engagement. Yeah, even the tier, admittedly it's double the cost, but as a heavy bomber specializing against surface ships... You guys just saw that, thing... right? What? Uh, the uh, the megalodon was able to shoot the uh, huge missile out of the air. I thought it had earlier, but no, unfortunately, I missed seeing that directly. Which I'm kind of happy about that because that means that the nerf actually might have done something for the huge um, missiles. Which 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 launcher has it got left? Actually. I uh, couldn't tell you off the top of my head. I'd have to. Uh, I think I... it's firing its less durable missile. Yeah, it's firing its 200k health missile, which is why it actually has. And there the goes another one. That down. She seems to have lost both he heavy missile, quite huge gantries. Yeah, but that doesn't matter a whole hell of a lot because it still has remote chitons. No, as in it's lost the actual launches, damn it. Okay, yeah, I see what you mean. 
So that, that last one that launched was um, likely damaged and also the last one it could launch. But yeah, there you go, if you want to kill a power, that's going to be Megalodon. Or just like Manisig is something with uh, very fast weapons, probably laser or PAC, something along those lines, uh, railguns seem to be working pretty good against it at the moment. Yeah, 1.2, just 900 meters a second or more, and you're bound to score a couple hits, it seems. Yeah. Even the tier is managing it, which is impressive given, well, 800 meters a second and, ke and chemical shells. Mm -hmm. So, this thing is a glass cannon. It's going to stay in the air for a long time, but once it gets hit, it doesn't seem to be able to fight well, back proper. It's at like 79% and still going, so I I really got to give some credit where it's due there to be able to keep going like this, because a lot of aircraft, you like hit like maybe once or twice and they just go straight into the water. But this yeah, is more of a, a lot of redundancy built into it. Yes, this is more this of a thruster craft than an actual aircraft. So, yeah, it's that should be ninjined. It's classed as a thruster craft. Plus, what I'll note quickly is it does have a lot of redundancy in its proportion, but not its actual weaponry. So, mm -hmm. what I would say is just having a missile launching. From the top, maybe, well, two explosive large missiles, since you already have the major bait missile. Well, I think we should also note that, that this is indeed a campaign design, and some flaws were most likely purposely built in to keep it from being too overpowered as to uh, not be killable by um, a player. Yeah. No, they're just anti-missile shooting them at each other's decoys, for the most part. Mm -hmm. But, um, Parallax, honestly, I think that's another flaw in the design. It relies too much on those huge missiles for its firepower. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So, think again, just something having... counter, it's just like, it doesn't have much left. Yeah. yeah. I think just having the... Having two kinetic missiles in this thing would be a real contender for one of the most cancerous designs in the campaign. Because. Need small missiles. <laughs> small <laughs> missiles! The kinetic one, definitely. If it had a second kinetic one, I can see it being probably a little bit too strong for the average player. And that's just from what I'm seeing over here. Since you're not gonna kill the missile, and it's just going to keep going. So, is there any other prominent things that we'd like to discuss about the design, or do you think we're, well, yeah, we're think good we've, for our review? On, I, think we've, I think we've touched on everything, and we've seen how it performs against a similar tier opponent. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'm good with that. Alright, the... Uh, look, look awesome. Uh, seems to suffer a bit from fragility if it starts taking actual damage. But that's usually a pretty common problem with anything that flies, so... This is true. So can't mark it down for that one. Considering it's just a little under 80%, it's actually doing pretty good. But, yeah. I guess we'll uh, go ahead and wrap it up here then? Yep. Let's do that. Alright, well, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this uh, review video. Uh, once again, this is a craft that is available in uh, the uh, campaign if you want to look it over it yourself. Um, you can do so from there. So uh, have y'all a uh, hell of a day and keep your hammer high. Later, guys. Later. Later.